Hi, it's me again. Today is Saturday, January 5th, 2019. It's been... I've had a, I've had a wonderful Christmas New Year period. I know it's been a while since my last video. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought I'd get in and do it another one today. Um, I've had a, oh, a wonderful Christmas New Year period. My, my my boyfriend came up from Melbourne on the 19th. Was it 19th? Yeah, I think it was the 19th. And um, on that was, I think, a Wednesday, if I remember correctly. can't remember. The Wednesday or Thursday, anyway. The following Monday was Christmas Eve. And he, on Christmas Eve, he took me... We went, and we went into... We went into Brisbane City and stayed at a lovely hotel, the Adina Apartments, next to Anzac Square. And we stayed there from the Monday, we checked in on the Monday, which was Christmas Eve, and then we checked out on the Friday the 28th. So we stayed there for the whole sort of week, which would ordinarily be a full working week, the full weekday working week, but this was the Christmas week, so yeah, anyway. Um... And then came back for the, that weekend on the 29th and 30th, which was the weekend. And then on the th on, New, on New Year's Eve, the Monday, the New Year's Eve, we checked into another hotel in the city at Kangaroo Point called the Point Hotel. Now, and we stayed there for just that night, and we came back on the Tuesday, which was the first. And, oh, my New Year's Eve was absolutely brilliant. I absolutely loved it. The Christmas week that we had in the city at, at the Adina, um, that was very good. I loved the hotel. It was a very nice hotel, the Adina Apartments. Very lovely hotel. Um, the staff at Adina were very helpful, very professional. Um... um the hotel was very well appointed. Um, we had definitely had some good good space, good... Um, um, I think it was very good air conditioning because it was um, up here in Brisbane over the summertime. It was very warm, so... It had, air conditioning is essential. <laughs> so, um, the, the, the Dina had very good air conditioning, um, very good... Uh, the, 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 the staff were very good. I found the, the, the room service staff were, were great. Uh, ha uh, housekeeping staff were great as well. Um, very professional, very, uh, very, yeah, very good, very, very helpful. Um, so overall, my, my, our time at the, the Adina apartments for that week were very enjoyable. We had my brother come down from Bray Park to, to see to for the day and uh, we had a nice oh nice big feast of lunch and nibbles and things and it was wonderful and then um, New Year's Eve at the point in Kangaroo Point oh that hotel is marvelous absolutely marvelous the 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 staff at the point were so helpful Mm. And that was very, very helpful, very considerate, very um, professional, and very. Um, I don't know. I just loved the whole experience of the New Year's Eve one. It was nice. And then we had our our our, our, um, our suite at the point was on the eighth floor, looking over. Um, the western side of the um, building, which looked over, um, we were right across this, right across from St Vincent's Private Hospital, which on the other side of that was a stretch of the river. And it, it, on our balcony, if you look down to the right, you could see the Story Bridge. That's how close we were to the city. 
And I, so, so I would look out our, our, over our balcony, you could see across, right there across the, the road was St Vincent's Private Hospital. And on the other side of that was the river. And then across from there was the CBD of the city. We could see the, the Brisbane Eye and stretch of South Bank and r- around to the Story Bridge, down to the right. And we had always oh, an excellent view of the city. Excellent view of the city from the eighth floor. About three or four floors above us was this rooftop bar, which apparently, according to various, um, a number of different um, websites, we just we did a search. According to an, um, a few different websites, this rooftop bar at the Point Hotel was one of the best hot spots to view the fireworks and everything for a New Year's Eve party hot spots. Not just to view the fireworks, but to have a, to a um, exclusive party. And you had to pay an entrance fee to get in of something more than $200 or something. And so it was like a very exclusive event. So this was happening like three or four floors above our room. So I was like, oh, we felt, we, felt, we felt really sort of privileged about that one. That was like, oh, switch. Sort of, okay. The, and our suite that was staying was definitely very well appointed, like the other one was very well appointed. And um, staff was very, like the other one, staff was very professional and um, have very, very helpful. And well, we loved it. We took photos of these, the, the point. And... Um, it was wonderful. We had v- video footage of the fireworks and everything. It was wonderful, magical evening. So yeah, wonderful Christmas, wonderful New Year. Now I got a couple of new books to show you, which I got for Christmas. Um, this one my boyfriend gave me. Well, they both were technically my, my boyfriend gave me. He gave me this one, George Orwell's 1984. Now, I'm most of the way through it already. You can, as you can tell, I'm most of the way through it. Oh, there's the front of it. And I'm most of the way through it already. Um, oh, oh, now, if you're not familiar with the story, this is a dystopian fiction was written in about the late 40s, 1948, 49, published in 1949. And hence, at that particular time, the year 1984 was in the, the future. It's, to us now, it's in the past, but um, at the time this book was written, the year that year was in the future. Now, this is a dystopian fiction, uh, entirely fiction, and um, if you're not familiar with the story, I'll give you the thing on the back. Okay, Hidden away in the record department of the sprawling Ministry of Truth, Winston Smith skillfully rewrites the past to suit the needs of the party. Yet he inwardly rebels against the totalitarian world he lives in, which demands absolute obedience and controls him through the all-seeing telescreens and the watchful eye of Big Brother symbolic head of the party. In his longing for truth and liberty, Smith begins a secret love affair with a fellow worker, Julia, but soon discovers the true price of freedom is betrayal. And a review from Timothy Garton Ash from the New York Review of Books describes this as George Orwell's final masterpiece, because this was his final novel before he died. His final masterpiece, enthralling and dis- sorry, enthralling and indispensable for understanding modern history. Quote, unquote. So, I'm most of the way through this, like I said, and I'm... Uh, some, par- some parts of it can be a little rough going, but... Overall, I believe it is a it is definitely worth the read. I definitely believe it is worth a read if if you can sort of um, take you need some some parts of it you need to take your time with and sort of immerse yourself in and so okay so it can be a little bit rough going sometimes, especially 
um, when he's he's received uh, this book from o, his, from O'Brien, and he's trying to get through a couple of chapters of this book, and um, it's called the book written by Goldstein, and he's trying to to read through a couple of chapters of this book. That part I found a little bit rough going, but the, generally I think it's, it's, it's definitely worth a read. If, if, you, if you've got the time and the energy and the patience, it's definitely worth it. Now, this other one is a compendium of three different novels written by the same author. It's a trilogy in the one book. Now, this is um, Ruth Park's The Harp and the South novels which comprise of the three books, Mrs, The Harp in the South, and Poor Man's Orange. And I bought this with a gift card that my boyfriend got me for Christmas. Now, these written... Um, uh, in ter- the timeline in terms of the, how the, when they, these books were written, The Harp in the South was written first, then Poor Man's Orange, and then Mrs. But Mrs. is the prequel to the other two. So chronologically, in terms of the timeline, Mrs. is first, then the other two, then Harp in the South, then Poor Man's Orange. So I think Harp in the South and Poor Man's Orange were written in the late 40s. And then Mrs. was written in the mid 80s. Mm. But they're all, I think, The Harp of the South and Poor Man's Orange were, were set in the late 40s. And then Mrs. was set, I think, a bit before that. Uh, sort of as a prequel, sort of precursor to. Because, um, as, you, as you may, some of you may remember in The Harp of the South, um, we meet the Darcy family. Who live in Surrey Hills in Sydney, which is a um, an inner city, inner Sydney suburb to the south of the inner, inner south suburb. And at the time of this was set in the late forties, which is just post war, um, just post World War Two. And at that particular time in the late forties, early fifties, the that area, the Surrey Hills area, was. Mm, not not of sort of I would, today in Australian modern modern lexicon of Australian English we would call this a bogan area. Um, but back then it was called the slum. And because I mean, I've read half of the South, I haven't read the other two. But anyway, um, yeah, we meet the Darcy family and they live in Surrey Hills. And they they have there's Huey and Darcy, uh, Huey and Margaret Darcy, and their two daughters, Rowena and Dola. And there's a, there's supposed to be a, a middle son, but when he was little, he went missing, and there's, they've not found any. There's still not been. Um, that's not resolved. That 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 um, disappearance. So it's just the two girls, and then of course there's there's two lodgers who live at their in their their house. There's um, actually three. There's Miss there's Patrick, who's from Northern Ireland, and then there's Miss Sheely and her son Johnny. Now Johnny Johnny Sheely, he's was he was born. Um, with a, what we would now probably term um, delicately, he was born with a, uh, a disability from birth. Um, probably some f- what we would identify today as some form of perhaps autism of some sort, some description, because his speech patterns were affected and whatever. Anyway. So we, we meet these people, and the, the, the Darcy's are like the majority of people in that area, are Catholic. So this was a, Catholic, a heavily Catholic area. 
because this is when people still lived in, in, in sort of groups according to their religion and, and whatever. Uh, so that area of Surrey Hills was, were all cut there, except for, except for this guy, Patrick, from Northern Ireland. He was Protestant. And he was pretty much Huey's best mate, even though Huey, was, Huey is Catholic and Patrick is Protestant. But anyway, so that which their, their religion sometimes is a bone of contention between them, but they're still best mates. Anyway, um, so we, we meet the, the, this family, and um, in the course of the, the story, Half in the South, we um, see Rowena, Rowena is, is in her late teens. Um, and she's left. She's left school to get a job, but she works at a like a packing, like packing tins of food into boxes and things. And, and, and um, young Dola, she's still in school. She's about twelve, ish, eleven, twelve years old. And um, she's still in school. She goes to a local Catholic school with other kids her age and everything. And she's taught by the nuns and things. And. Um, so we follow this family and the events of the town, the little area and things. And, and um, we see Rowie, she... Poor Rowie, Rowena. She meets a guy, it has a relationship with him. They end up having sex and she gets pregnant and she's like, uh-oh, what do I do? She ends up try- She thinks she wants to go get an abortion and she ends up backing out at the last minute. And then as she's walking home from that, she ends up getting beat up and she loses the baby. But she ends up meeting another guy and getting with him, so that's fine. And then th- these sort of little events happening, and so it's a, it's a wonderful story. So, but then Mrs. Mrs. is set before all this. We meet, we see in Mrs. Um, when Huey and Margaret meet. As sh- they were both born in the same town just a few months apart in in rural New South Wales. And and so they're, they're families and knew of each other and knew each other. And as they grow up, they end up falling in love and getting married. So there's this whole love story from the, in their, their childhood. There's a precursor to Harp in the South. So, and then, of course, Poor Man's Orange picks up after Harp of the South with... Um, Rowie and a new fella getting married and having a little baby girl and that sort of thing and, and of course Margaret's mother comes to stay and she passes away and so that's, that's it's a very interesting story and I love it it's, it's an Australian tale okay so I suppose I'm going to leave it there. This is a bit of a long video. I'm sorry, but... Uh, oh, I can smell bolognese. Oh, someone's cooking at this hour in the morning. What is it? Not even, barely even 10 o'clock almost. 10 o'clock in the morning. And someone's making a bolognese. A lasagna. Oh, anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, mm. We had a wonderful Christmas, wonderful New Year. And I have some other books that I'll do a... Uh, 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 we'll call on uh, in, in another video. Yes, I will. And, um, so yeah. Like, I'm looking. It's my birthday next week. Next week is my birthday on Wednesday the 9th. It's my birthday. I'll be turning 36. Yes, I'll be turning 36. Even though I do look old, I don't know, with all this grey hair. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll do another video hopefully soon hopefully soon I'll do another video so I'm, I'm, my health is doing good my health is doing good um, I'm improving I'm, my health, my weight I think I'm still losing little bits of weight but not as, no, not as much as what I was but I'm still sort of trying to get it off and it's definitely sort of the rate of weight loss has slowed down a little bit, but I'm still losing little increments. Hopefully, like, like a kilo here and a kilo there. Kind of a little bit. But anyway, it's definitely coming off and I'm doing good. Anyway, Happy New Year. I hope your Christmas was great. And, um, 
live with passion. 